is Vincent Schilling, and this is Myths and Atrocities About Columbus and Columbus Day. I originally wrote this article, then shared over 100,000 times, and a lot of people have asked for the sources of this article, and I'm putting all those links in the description below. Uh, this video is not for the young ones. There are some very disturbing accounts uh, that are very, let's just say, adult-related. Columbus Day is the second Monday of uh, October every year, and uh, some communities celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, but we're going to be talking about Columbus Day, the man who supposedly discovered uh, the United States. And, uh, Columbus Day was conceived by the Knights of Columbus, which was a Catholic fraternal organization in the 1930s because they wanted a Catholic hero. Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, signed the day into law as a federal holiday in 1937. A huge portrait of Columbus still sits in our nation's capital uh, today. On the way, Columbus stole a sailor's reward. So after obtaining funding for his explorations to reach Asia, uh, Columbus offered his fellow sailors that uh, if they were to be the first ones to discover uh, any sort of land on their journey that was funded by King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, he would offer them a huge reward. And this amount was 10,000 Maravedis, which is about $540, and at that time was about a, a year's salary for a sailor. When uh, another sailor saw the land in October of 1492, Columbus retracted the reward and said, no, 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 the uh, last evening I saw a dim light uh, in the West and therefore you don't get your reward, uh, it goes to me. So uh, the sailor didn't get it, even though Columbus said whoever finds it first will get that reward and Columbus uh, essentially took it back. Columbus never, ever landed in the upper 48 states, ever. Never, never, ever, never made it anywhere above Florida, ever. Never even went even into Florida or anywhere else. Columbus quite literally landed what we now know as the Bahamas and later Hispaniola, present-day Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. He says, as soon as I arrived in the Indies on the first island which I found, I took some of the natives by force in order that they might learn and might give me information of whatever there is in these parts. So he just took them by force. Columbus painted a horrible picture of otherwise peaceful natives. So when Columbus first saw the native Arawaks that came to greet him and his crew uh, with a peaceful and admiring tone, these are his words. They brought us parrots and balls of cotton and spears and many other things. They willingly traded everything they owned. They were well built with good bodies and handsome features. They do not bear arms and do not know them. For I showed them a sword. They took it by the edge and cut themselves out of ignorance. They have no iron. Their spears are made of cane. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. So after several months of being there, Columbus's writings changed a little bit in order to appease those he was trying to, uh, let's just say, they're funding his trip, so he's got to make it sound good for him. So he says, after several months being there, two natives were murdered during trading. So Columbus, who had otherwise described the natives as gentle people, wrote, they are evil. I believe they are from the island of Caribbean that they eat men. He also described them as savage cannibals with dog-like noses that drink the blood of their victims. And this is still taught in schools today. <laughs> Columbus's men were rapists and murderers, and this is documented, not just an assertion. This account is by a close friend of Columbus who wrote the first disturbing account of a relation between himself and a native female gift given to him by Columbus. When I was in the boat, I captured a very beautiful Carib woman whom the said Lord Admiral gave to me and with whom having taken her into my cabin, she being naked according to their custom, I conceived desire to take pleasure. I wanted to put my desire into execution, but she did not want it and treated me with her fingernails in such a manner that I wished I had never begun. 
But seeing that, to tell you the end of it all, I took a rope and thrashed her well, for which she raised such unheard of screams that you would not have believed your ears. Finally, we came to an agreement in such a manner that I can tell you she seemed to have been brought up in a school of harlots. In addition to raping and taking the women at will, Columbus's men were also murderers, and there are several accounts by many different writings. Spaniards were testing the sharpness of their blades on native people by cutting them in half, beheading them in contests, throwing natives into vats of boiling soap, accounts of suckling infants being lifted from their mother's breasts by Spaniards, only to be dashed headfirst into large rocks. Um, Bartolome de las Casas, a former slave owner who became bishop of Chiapas, uh, described these exploits. He saw the atrocities and eventually changed his ways and was horrified by what he saw. And you can find many of his writings uh, all over, all over. So he says, Such inhumanities and barbarisms were committed in my sight as no age can parallel. My eyes have seen these acts so foreign to human nature that I now tremble as I write. Columbus enslaved people for the pursuit of gold. So because he had told Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand that he'd be finding all this gold uh, that he didn't find, it, essentially he was given 17 more ships and 1,200 men uh, for his next expedition. However, he was unable to deliver, so he forced natives to work in gold mines until absolute exhaustion and those who opposed were beheaded or had their ears cut off. They also had their hands cut off. In fact, during these expeditions, uh, all persons over age 14 had to supply at least one thimble of gold every three months and were given copper necklaces as proof of their compliance. Those who did not fill, fulfill their obligations had their hands cut off, which were tied around their necks while they bled to death. Some 10,000 native people died without hands. In two years' time, 250,000 Indians on Haiti were dead. Many deaths included mass suicides or intentional poisoning or mothers killing their babies to avoid such persecution. In the words of Columbus, written a few years before his death, gold is the most precious of all commodities. Gold constitutes treasure, and he who possesses it has all he needs in the world, as also the means of rescuing souls from purgatory and restoring them to the enjoyment of paradise. Columbus provided sex slaves to his men, young girls as a matter of fact. In addition to putting natives to work as slaves in his gold mine, Columbus also sold sex slaves to his men, some as young as nine years old. Columbus and his men raided villages for sex and sport. In the year 1500, Columbus wrote to a friend, a hundred castellanos are as easily obtained for a woman as for a farm, and it is very general, and there are plenty of dealers who go about looking for girls. Those from nine to ten are now in demand. Those are Columbus's words. Columbus's men used native people as dog food. In the early years of Columbus's conquest, there were butcher shops throughout the Caribbean where Indian bodies were sold as dog food. Columbus and his men actually had hunts with these war dogs, and these war dogs were covered with armor. They were a fierce match for the native people, um, and it was terrible. And uh, they were fed human flesh, and uh, there are accounts of uh, Columbus's men tearing babies out of uh, horrified families' arms and throwing the babies to the dogs uh, uh, to watch them be torn to shreds. I, it's unimaginable. Columbus was taken back to Spain in shackles. He was arrested for his behavior by the governor at the time. Columbus was essentially forgiven for his crimes. He was pardoned. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, this is Vincent Schilling. I appreciate it very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, and I'll be glad to do the best I can to respond. Uh, hope the best for you and your family. Much love. Thank you.